Good afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here doing this afternoon's presentation. Today's presentation, uh, looking at the auction process on the JSC, in truth, a very, very simple concept, if you know how it works. Until you know how it works, it, it baffles people and the like. Um, but as I said, simple process, so only one example with the folks once we can revisit it and go back into that example, but a, a, a simple auction process. And I suppose the place to start is really what? The process determine fair opening and closing prices. Uh, what that means is that particularly in the closing auction, it means that that last 5 p.m. trade is a fair price. And if we go back, way back to sort of early 2000s and the 1990s, you know, you could almost in a sense Manipulate a closing price. Yeah, one trade on Anglo of, of two shares you know, worth 600 Rand could be the closing price, whereas this is a stock that had done hundreds of millions per day. So the JC implemented that uh, uh, auction process to get out a, a fair price. It's also used for volatility. We'll touch on that in a moment. What's very important is during the auction phases, and there's an opening, a closing, and a volatility auction. During the auction phase, no continuous trading happens. In other words, orders aren't matched. So if I put a buy in at 12 Rand and someone puts a sell at 12 Rand, it doesn't match during that auction process. It will match at the end of that auction process. So orders can be added to, and into the market. They can be deleted from the market. In essence, it's what's happening during the course of the day, the difference being no orders are being matched. So you can put an order in, you can take it out, you can do as you wish, you can decide to adjust the price or a volume or something like that. Certainly no matching, and that's the very important part. And at market orders, in other words, those without a limit price, obviously go to the front of the queue. So if you put an at market order, you would go to the top of the queue. If you're a buyer, you would all sell at the same place, you would go to the, the, the top or the bottom of the queue. Some stockbrokers don't enable at market orders during the, the uh, auction process, opening and closing, and that really is at their discretion. Certainly, the market is able to do at market orders. The JC has no problem with those orders. Orders are going in during the auction. You get the buyers and the sells. They're all stacking up. No trading is happening. And then at the end of that auction process, the system will automatically determine the price at which the largest volume happens. In other words, the price at which you're going to see the most amount of volume going through. And I'm going to go into the example because that is the crux of it. Broadly, two cruxes, I suppose. One, no trading happening. Two, it's that price at which the largest volume happens. That price is then set off as, the, as the, the, the auction price, and that would be either the close or the open for the day, depending whether it's an opening auction or a closing auction. And importantly, that auction, that last auction price will consist of multiple people on either side. Any other trade you would see during the course of the day is one buyer and one seller. Whereas in the auction, it could be multiple buyers on the one side, multiple sellers on the other side. And it depends on the stock. If you're looking at a big top 40 stock, it's definitely going to be multiple buyers and sellers. And in fact, that last trade that goes through is often tens, if not hundreds of millions of rands. And you're smaller, less liquid, not necessarily. But it certainly can be multiple people on both sides of that trade. So why do we have an auction process? Why did the JC implement this? In essence, as I said, to ensure a fair price. To a degree, it's important at the opening. I think it's critically more important at that closing price. That's what we all reference. That's what we talk about after the market is closed on TV and radio and everything. So it, it gives a much fairer reflection of price, and it's there to try and reduce volatility. Now, Two logics behind the reduced volatility is one, to get that, that opening and closing price, but the other point of the equation is you get a volatility auction at the same time. I'm going to touch on that in the next slide, so we'll park that there for now. So when do we get the auctions? We get an opening auction, which happens pre-market. That runs from 8.35 until 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock will be that final uh, uh, trade, and that could then be the opening price for the market that day, and then a closing auction which runs from 10 to 5 until 5 o'clock, and that 5 o'clock price would then be the final price for the day and would be the closing price for that trading day. So those are the two which are going to happen constantly, opening and closing auctions. I think the closing auction is the one that we probably most likely are going to bump our heads into. The other two that we see is a volatility auction, and that is as needed. In other words, 
what's happening here is all stocks have what is considered the volatility band as set by the JSE. Say we take Sassel. Say that volatility band is uh, 6%. If there's a sudden move in Sassel that takes it more than 6% from where it was to where it goes to in a short space of time, that stock will enter what they call an intraday volatility auction. It's going to happen typically under three circumstances. One is what we call the fat finger. In other words, the broker makes an error and puts a massive sell or buy order into the market and you get a sudden spike in the price and you then go into an auction and typically it will last for 10 or 15 minutes and, and then come out of the volatility auction. The other two times it's going to happen is when the stock is literally moving either upwards or downwards um, at massive speed. And the logic behind it, apart from the fat finger, the logic behind having a, a volatility auction is to say, okay, hang on, the stock has suddenly moved. Let's pause the market. Let's let the individuals in the market work out what's happening and what they want to do. Be it do they want to be a buyer or seller, get in or out. And so whether it be a, a takeover suddenly announced and the stock moves you know, at 10% in five seconds, whether it be a market crash, it just that essence to try and calm the market down, let it think about what's happening, let it think about what it wants to do. And then we get intraday auctions on what we call the ZAR3. Now, ZAR3 shares are the small caps, mostly LTEX and stuff. And that happens in the middle of the day, and that goes into a 15-minute intraday auction. Uh, very often, we don't even notice them happening. The stocks are typically illiquid, not a heck going down there. So not, 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 not massively prevalent, not really something which most of us are, in, are, are encountering. But sometimes you'll place an order into one of those stocks and you'll suddenly discover nothing's happening. Why not? That's why. It's in an intraday auction process. So those are the four different auctions that we're going to see in the market. Who can engage it? Anyone can take part. As long as you've got a broker account, you've got money in your account or shares, obviously you can engage in that, in that uh, uh, opening, closing, or volatility auction. You can place limit or at market orders, no restrictions in that space, so you can do either order type that you like. And as I said, that final trade will include multiple people on either side. And an important point about an auction, in fact, this is a JSC rule, that if you put a price into the market and there's a better price ahead of you, you get the better price. Say you want to sell a share at 12 Rand. So you put a sell order in at 12 Rand, but there's already someone in the market before you who's saying, hey, I'll buy at 12 Rand 50 you get that 12 grand 50. And the same will happen here in an auction process. You might put a sale or a purchase price in, and if the system can get you a better price, it does get you a better price. And I'll explain how I mean by if it can get you a better price in a moment. But always the case, if, if it's possible for you to get a better price in the market, you will get that better price, whether you are a buyer or a seller. You will never pay more than what you wanted to or sell for less than what you wanted to, but if there's a better price, you will get it. So let's move on to an example. Bid, which is the buyers on the left-hand side. Offer, which is the sellers on the right-hand side. We've got a whole lot on the buy side from 2470 up to 2545. And on the sell side from 2475 down to 2560. What's important here is let's look at that top line, which if you look at just that there, you can see, hang on, under normal circumstances, this would have matched. Because you've got a buyer and a seller, and, and you know, that would have normally have matched. Okay, volume's not spot on, but certainly 12,000 would have gone through. And that's the whole point of the auction process, in that they don't match. So what we can see here is, well, okay, hang on a second, a quick eyeball, and I'll go into a bit more detail in a slide or two, but a quick eyeball says, okay, where would we expect the best price to do, the be biggest volume to take place? Around the 2485 level, which would mean everyone on the buy side from 2485 would trade, and everyone on the sell side down to 2485 would trade at the same time. So we would have all of that. And what we see is on the bid, we've got 20,000 shares at 2485. And on the offer, we've got 25,750 shares at 2485 or greater. It's lesser and greater. And what we will see is that closing price will be at the 2485 and 20,000 shares will trade, leaving 5,750. He has that same picture with the shares that will trade. Those highlighted in red are the ones that will go through in the process. So this person here 
They said, okay, I want to buy 1,500 shares. I'm prepared to pay 25 Rand 45. They're actually going to trade at that 24.85 because that is the price point at which the biggest volume will transact. This person who wanted to sell at 24.75 will actually sell at 24.85. The person wanting to sell at 25.25 25 is going to say, well, hang on, there was someone there who I could have traded against. There was someone at my price point. Yes, there was, but the system is saying at what price point does the biggest volume go through. If we traded only at the 25, 25, 25 level, we would have got a lot less volume going through because on the buyers, there were only two guys there and that was only for 3,900 shares. By dropping it down to 2485, we've got 20,000 shares to go through. And if they had dropped it further to 2470, it wouldn't have helped, it wouldn't have made a difference. So that wouldn't have necessarily made any change into the scenario. So the system says, and it's an automatic process, the system says, bingo, it's going to be 2485. What you can do during an auction process is that the system will tell you what the uncross value is going to be. In other words, at what price will this auction conclude? Now, I don't know of any online broker that shows that value. But certainly if you contact a, a broker or their call center, they can tell you what the uncrossed value will be, and you can obviously then put a price into trade at that. Problem being, of course, is that uncrossed value changes all the time. In this example here, if that person at uh, 24.75 pulled their bid and offer, we might have got a different closing price. Or someone else came in with a bigger amount, uh, say someone came in with a large purchase at 24.25, a whole bunch, we might have got a different price. So it, it, it's a constantly fluid process. So if I go back, that's where we're sitting. The market says, okay, hang on a second. On the bid side, we've got 20,000 shares that are on the purchase at 24.85 or more. On the sell side, we've got 25,750 shares that are on market at 24.85 or lower. So that 2485 is the magic number, 20,000 shares trade, and it goes through like that. And a bunch of the buyers actually got to buy cheaper than they wanted, and a couple of the sellers actually got to sell cheaper than they wanted. What we would then see, last trade, 20,000 shares at 2485, and what would be left is a market looking like this. There's still some shares at 2485 that didn't trade, those now remain in the market until cancelled. Depends if it was good for day, good until cancelled. It will be there tomorrow morning. And it will automatically enter that auction. If you place a trade prior to an auction and the auction starts, your trade is entered into the auction. So if you placed a trade at quarter to five that didn't match, you will go into that closing auction starting at ten to five. An important point Two types of stocks or equities or listings that are not covered in auctions, like in fact, more than two, warrants and share installments do not take part in the auction process. Um, Exchange-traded funds and exchange-traded notes do not take part of the auction process. Risks involved, your order might not be fooled. In that example there, we saw the person who had been wanting uh, to sell 11,000 was suddenly left with 5,750, so they only got... A uh, little over half of their of their full might only be partly filled, um, and some brokers don't enable that at market orders during the auction process. I think that's wrong, but I suppose that's at the behest of the stockbroker. They they can design their system as they particularly want. So really, the process is to determine a fair price. Anyone can take part, and the key focus is that price at which the highest volume transacts. And the two began to come into most frequently is the opening auction from 25 to 9 until 9 o'clock and then the closing auction 10 to 5 until 5 o'clock. That's it, ladies and gents. As I promised, a fairly simple concept. If you've got some questions, uh, pop them into the, 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 the text box. If you've got a microphone attached, you can raise your hand. I'll activate your microphone. We can take an audio question. I'm already getting a couple of questions coming through. Uh, Simpiwe wants to know, okay, and it's also coming from Brad, does the suffix auction process work the same way? Uh, yes, it does. Suffix works exactly the same. If 
you look at index futures, for example, the, the, the auction time is significantly shorter. So five minutes in, in, in the morning. So same process on, on, on the different asset classes. Sharon wants to know what happens if she only gets half of her order. Uh, Sharon, that's unfortunately part of the risk. Um, the one way you can try and, and, and mitigate that risk is do an at-market order because at-market orders automatically go to the front of the queue. The problem is, as I said, is that not all brokers allow at-market orders. What you will sometimes see is some crazy prices going in. Take Billiton. Say it goes into the auction at 240 Rand. Someone really, really wants to buy Billiton shares. So they put a, a buy in at 400. They're not likely to trade at 400 Rand. In fact, they're very likely to trade around the 240 level, but they put that huge buy price in so that quite simply they're almost, they're more likely to get a trade. They sit there, they're ahead of the queue in that process. And you will see a lot of jockeying for position. As I said, the, the, the system shows you the uncrossed price. So people will be canceling orders and adding orders. And you'll see a lot of activity happening in that, particularly the closing auction in those 10 minutes of that closing auction. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through, so I'm going to leave it there for this afternoon. Thanks very much for attending. I hope it understands. It's a, it's a great idea. I like the auction process. It makes for a much cleaner and fairer opening price and closing price. It removes some of the attempted manipulation we used to have in the 1990s and early 2000s. Uh, typically works well, and certainly I think it's something that if you want to buy, you can certainly avail yourself of. Thanks very much for your time today. Cheers.